He lived on the streets. But when he finds his picture inside a millionaire's wallet, his life is changed forever. It was a hot afternoon, and the sun was scorching. Philip was sitting on the sidewalk, panting and thirsty, while cars and people passed him by, oblivious to his presence. The little boy, only 11 years old, had just woken up from a nap under his cardboard, but his aching body indicated that he hadn't had a good sleep. He looked at his coin jar and sighed. He hadn't gotten many coins, which meant he wouldn't have much to eat in the evening. The poor thing had learned to make do with the bare minimum, but sometimes it was just too hard. Suddenly, he saw an elderly woman approaching, carrying several heavy bags. He got up and offered to help her, hoping that she would give him some gratification. The lady accepted Philip's help and thanked him for his kind gesture. But when he realized that the lady appeared to be very humble, and perhaps did not have much as well, as soon as she offered him some money, he politely declined. The boy had a good heart and a lot of empathy for others, so he never lied or abused people's goodwill. As he walked back to his corner on the sidewalk, he saw a family coming out of a restaurant. The poor boy was so hungry that his stomach started rumbling when he smelled the food. He approached and asked for some leftovers, but the family ignored him, got into their car, and left. Philip sighed and sat back down next to his cardboard. He leaned his head against the cold wall and felt a mixture of sadness, loneliness, and hunger. Poor boy. It turned out that he had been living on the streets for as long as he could remember. He was skinny and small for his age, with brown hair and eyes that reflected the suffering of those without a home. Life wasn't easy for little Philip. He spent most of his time begging and looking for food in the trash. He had to battle the cold, the heat, hunger and thirst, as well as the indifference and hostility of the people who passed by him every day. Whenever he heard someone say, Shh, shh, get out of here, you filthy boy. His little heart ached at their cruelty. The boy was raised by a group of homeless people who took him in when he was still a baby. As far as anyone knows, they found him abandoned nearby the alley where they lived. The homeless were humble and simple people who lived in tents and slept in sleeping bags. And despite the difficulties, they tried to help each other and took care of the little baby like a big family. Philip learned many things from his friends on the street. He learned to fend for himself, to find food and shelter, and to defend himself against the dangers that lurked in the shadows. He also learned to be kind, honest, and not to steal or deceive people, even if it was tempting. He was known as a happy, smiling child. He never lied, never cheated, and always did his best to help his friends, who were like parents to him. The little boy was respected and admired by everyone, even by the rudest and roughest adults in the group. Until one day, on a night like any other for the homeless, something was about to change in everyone's lives. They were fast asleep, exhausted after yet another day struggling to survive on the streets, when suddenly a loud noise cut through the silence of the night. They woke up in panic and confusion, not knowing what was happening. Within seconds, a group of violent young people invaded the homeless camp, attacking them with bottles filled with flammable liquid and burning rags. The terrified homeless people ended up separating amid the chaos and running in opposite directions to try to escape the brutal attack. Some managed to escape, but others were not so lucky. The fire spread quickly through the makeshift tents, leaving many of them injured and burned. Some were unable to escape in time and lost their lives in that brutal attack. For little Philip, that was a traumatic moment that changed his life forever. He got lost from his friends during the commotion and ran aimlessly, not knowing where to go. He saw his friends being burned alive and heard their screams of pain and despair. From that day on, the poor little boy had to learn to live alone, without their protection and security. He had to fight even harder to stay alive on the streets, without friends or family. This terrible episode left a deep scar on the little boy's heart. He became even more vulnerable and exposed to the dangers that surrounded him, but he also became more supportive and whenever he could, he shared his experiences and helped the other homeless people he met to overcome their difficulties. The daily situations faced by the poor boy were many. He had to deal with constant hunger, cold and lonely nights, lack of hygiene and the violence that took place on the streets. 
He also faced the prejudice and contempt of people who saw him as a filthy boy and worthless. Despite all this, Philip never gave up hope of one day having a better life. He dreamed of studying, of having a home, a family, friends, and a decent life. The boy knew it wouldn't be easy, but he believed that with perseverance, he could achieve his goals. He was a brave and strong child who faced adversity with humility and determination. He was an example to all who knew him and an inspiration to those who dreamed of a better life. Then, on that scorching day, close to midday, the little boy was walking through the streets of the city, hungry and thirsty and covering himself with the piece of cardboard he had. He was downtown where lots of people were hurrying around and bumping into each other. Suddenly, he noticed a man in a suit with a very nice black briefcase passing by. He stared at him, and for a moment he thought, I want to be like him when I grow up. He must have a beautiful house and lots of money. I would never go hungry again and I would have a warm bed to sleep in at night. But this brief moment of reflection was interrupted when the boy saw something fall out of the man's pocket and he kept walking. The boy ran towards the object and as he got closer, he saw an object glinting in the sunlight on the ground. It was a black leather wallet with a gold initials J.A. engraved on the front. The boy picked up the wallet and looked for the man, but he had disappeared into the crowd. So he decided to see if there was an address inside, but when he opened the wallet, the boy was stunned by the amount of money and cards in it. His eyes lit up. He had never seen so many bills together. Philip could have kept all the money if he had wanted to, and never had to worry about going hungry or cold again. However, he knew that wasn't right, and that he needed to return the wallet to its owner. The boy ran towards the path the man had taken, looking from side to side, but nothing. He was gone. Then for a second, he saw him up ahead and started running down the street after the man. His feet were aching and burning from running on the boiling asphalt with just his worn out sandals. But he kept looking for the owner of the wallet. And when he finally got tired of running and stopped to take a breather, he saw the man in the suit enter a very big and fancy building. And so, Philip ran inside. Hey sir, hey you dropped your wallet, shouted the boy who was running almost out of breath but he lost sight of him as soon as he entered the company. As soon as the little boy arrived at the building and tried to enter, he was stopped by the security guard who wouldn't let him pass. Hey boy, are you crazy? What are you doing here? Go away, you filth. There's nothing for you here, said the guard. Philip was always very sad to hear these things, but he was used to it, so he just explained. I don't want anything, sir. I just want to return this wallet I found. Hey! The boy shouted as the security guard reached for the wallet. Give it back, the boy asked. But that greedy guard, seeing his boss's initials on the front of that beautiful wallet, opened it at once and started laughing sarcastically when he saw how much money he had. <laughs> it's my lucky day today, he said as he took out all the money. No, stop, give it back, you can't take the money, it's not yours, I'll tell him, said the little boy, jumping up and trying to reach the hands of that huge security guard. But then the man slapped the boy who fell to the ground with tears in his eyes. Get out of here, you miserable brat. This place is high class. You can't come in here all dirty and stinking like that. Besides, do you want your wallet back? Take it! And threw it empty at his feet. Now get lost, go! Philip took the wallet and got up, running and crying. He felt humiliated and wronged, and the poor boy ended up breaking the strap of his sandal. He stopped in the park in front of the company and sat down on a bench from where he could see the entrance to the building. The little boy was crying, and he didn't know if it was because of the security guard's cruelty or because his hunger was now getting to the point of being unbearable. Even so, he decided to wait for the man in the suit and return his wallet. Meanwhile, the rich man named George Ambrose was in his huge office looking at the view, thoughtful. George was the CEO of the largest technology company in the city, and certainly the richest man in the region. The businessman was crestfallen, as if he was reflecting on something that cut to his heart. And he really was. It was his little son Henry's birthday, and always, on this date, the man tried not to show the sadness that consumed him. He spent the day in anguish, and then he received a call from Joseph, his private detective of more than a decade. As he spoke to the investigator, 
George became more and more discouraged. He had hired the detective to find his other son, who had been kidnapped when he was just a baby. This would be the eleventh year since the boy's disappearance, and George still felt lost without him. Not only him. His wife Scarlett had suffered the loss of their newborn for years and blamed herself for it. After a long conversation, the detective told George that there was no new information about his son's whereabouts. The millionaire hung up the phone with a heavy heart and looked at the photo of Henry on his desk. At the same time as he felt happy to have raised such a beautiful and gentle boy, he couldn't help crying as he thought about how different his life would have been if his missing son had been there. It was a pain he was already used to, but one that hurt even more with each passing year. Oh God, I wonder how he is. Will I ever find my boy? Said the inconsolable man softly. But he couldn't show this sadness in front of his son, Henry. So, he pulled himself together and started packing his things, since he had decided to go out and buy him a present. He went down in the elevator, greeted the staff, and said goodbye to the security guard as usual. However, something unbelievable was about to happen in that man's life. Meanwhile, Philip who had spent the day roasting in the sun and starving, watched the people who passed him by, with their families having ice cream, laughing and chatting, and wondered what it would be like to have a family and a life like that. I wonder if one day I'll have someone to talk to. The little boy thought with a feeling of loneliness and sadness, remembering that horrible day when he lost the only people he called family. That was all the boy wanted, a family. He thought about it for a moment, wondering why his parents had abandoned him when he was a baby and why he had to live on the streets, struggling to survive every day. But then he noticed the rich man coming out of the building. He got up from his stool and ran after him, shouting, Hey, hey, sir. But the city was in chaos and the businessman didn't hear him. He quickened his pace to catch up with him and with all his strength, he ran so fast that before he could reach the man, he dropped the wallet and it fell open. As he was picking up all the things that had fallen out of it, he realized that there was something particularly strange. It was a photo, and he immediately picked it up so it wouldn't get dirty. But that's when that poor little boy's world turned upside down. What? What is this? The boy was completely confused. Huh? How is that possible? Who is that? He didn't know how to explain or what to think. No, it can't be. That... that's me? It was him in the picture, only in a different way. He was all tidy and smiling. He had white teeth and shiny hair. He was fuller, not as skinny as he was, as if he were healthy. What is this? How am I here? Thought the boy, desperate. Philip was clearly shocked and confused, not even understanding how a photo of himself could be inside a rich man's wallet. Or worse, how come he was so healthy and wealthy in the picture? What was going on? The little boy stood there in the street holding the photo in his hands, trying to understand what was going on. His heart began to beat faster, thinking of the endless possibilities that came to mind. Then the poor little boy looked up and saw the rich man standing there looking at him with a petrified look. The man, who had turned around because he had reached into his pocket and thought he had left his wallet in his office, but when he saw the little boy holding it in one hand and the photo of his son Henry in the other, he simply couldn't believe his eyes. George slowly approached the boy and took the photo. Looking at it and at him with intense pain, his eyes simply filled with tears. He couldn't believe that he was finally seeing his son again, the son he had searched for so long. The man fell to his knees and hugged Philip tightly, bursting into tears of happiness and gratitude. Oh my God, I found you, son. I found you, said the man, stroking his dirty little hair. Philip didn't know how to react, but he felt a strange, comforting warmth in his heart. The poor thing remained silent for a while. He had lots of questions, but no idea how to ask them. It turned out that George and Scarlett were a happy and very wealthy couple who were expecting a child. They were overjoyed at the news of the pregnancy, but ended up finding out that they were going to be twins. Everything was already prepared for the arrival of Henry and Philip. Their mother had ordered two gold bracelets with their names engraved on them so they wouldn't get confused. As they were very wealthy, a gang planned to kidnap the twins and ask for a very high ransom. But something went wrong, 
and they ended up taking only one of the babies during birth. One of Scarlett's delivery nurses was part of this gang, but when they were taking the first baby to the bandits, someone from the hospital saw them and called the police. It was a terrible uproar, George desperately looking for the son they had just kidnapped, the poor wife giving birth to her second child without her husband by her side, who was her emotional support, the police sirens invading the hospital, and the crowd of people seeing what was going on. But during their escape, the gang was chased by the police and ended up in an accident, crashing their car into a tree in the middle of the road. The criminals ran away but were caught and arrested. Only the nurse managed to escape with the baby through the forest and abandoned it in a dark alley when she returned to the urban area. The parents were devastated. Their world collapsed in a matter of seconds, poor parents. But they never gave up looking for their lost son and spent a fortune on investigations and searches. The businessman knew that time was passing quickly and that every day was one less chance of finding his baby. But unfortunately, that time passed and he was never found. Meanwhile, life went on for the kidnapped baby, who was found by a group of homeless people who named him Philip, as written on his little gold bracelet. They raised him as if he were part of them, caring for and protecting him. Of course, they took the bracelet and sold it. It was a feast for them for a while. George continued to search for his son, unaware that the baby he had been looking for was alive and well but living like a homeless person. And on that scorching day, the man was sad and lonely, as it was yet another birthday that his other son, Henry, would spend without his twin brother. However, now his heart was full again. The millionaire looked up to the heavens and thanked God immensely. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Oh, my God. I can't believe it. Thank you. And stroked his little boy with tear-filled eyes. He explained everything to the boy, who cried with emotion at finally having a family. The businessman fired the security guard who had stolen the money and beaten up his son and took Philip home. The reunion with his mother and brother Henry was heartbreaking for anyone who witnessed the emotional scene as they embraced him, regardless of how dirty he was. Over time, the little boy adapted to his new life of wealth, but he was determined to help those who still lived on the streets, just as he once had. He convinced his father to set up an NGO to help the homeless get back on their feet, providing shelter, food, medical and psychological assistance, as well as employment and education opportunities. The organization was a success and helped transform the lives of many. Over time, the boy also met up with his old street friends and invited them to join the NGO. Together, they worked to help even more people get on their feet, and the organization became a reference in the city. Philip had finally found a purpose in his life and was grateful to have had the opportunity to transform other people's lives as well, just as his own had been transformed. He learned that family can come from where you least expect it and that love and dedication can change everything. If you liked the story, surely the next video that's appearing on your screen will move you too. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel Give us a thumbs up and activate the notification bell so you won't miss any of our next videos. A huge kiss and see you in the next story.